A friend just received this 1966 Tremolux, bought it from a dealer up in the Chicago area, and he has concerns that it is not exactly as described and potentially not working as well as he had hoped. So I thought I'd go through it and show him and you and the dealer what the amp is, and I'll let them fight over what the condition is versus how it was described and all that. But this is just an unbiased look at this amp in its current state. Let me take it out of the cabinet and we'll get started. It does have the three prong. Let's make sure it's installed correctly. Mismatch of screws. So here's a flathead here. And there's a non-original Phillips here, an original one here, and a larger screw with a washer here. All kinds of fun. It's got a couple of bent chassis mounting screws. Doesn't really affect the value of the amp, but it sure made it fun to get these out. Uh, if he keeps the amp, I'll give him the option of, I can try to straighten these. We could replace these with some new ones. I could even age them a little bit to make them look like they're old. That's for down the road. Let's pull this out slowly. All right, so replaced cathode bypass caps. Not the most beautiful job, but not terrible. Let me get this out and we'll take a look at things. Uh, he said it was a 66. It's got a 65 date stamp at least. All right, the power transformer has got a date code of 1964. The choke has got a date code of 1965. The contention here is that this is an 022871 transformer from 1970 possibly 1960, more likely 1970. And this is the model used in the basement, not the model used in the Tremolux. Now, it is arguable that this might be an improvement over the Tremolux's output transformer. However, uh, the, the owner says, it, or the buyer says, it was not listed as having a replaced output transformer. So there it is. This is not the model used, and the date is way out of range. We have 64 on the power, 65 on the choke, date stamp of 65 inside the chassis, which I'll show, which I'll show in a minute, and most likely 1970 from a basement here. Let's take a look inside the doghouse. The store that sold this amp said their text looked it over, it had been recapped, recapped well. Let's take a look. All right, Sprague Adams, 220, 220, 2020, 20. I doubt this amp originally had 220, 220, would have had. 70, 70, but this is fine. Only measure these two droppers. They should be 10K. 9.63, 9.75, both within tolerance, both probably okay. Uh, whoever did this did a pretty good job. It's not the prettiest I've seen. Seems okay. They're not loose. I'm not gonna, uh, there's no criticism to be made here. Let's take a look inside. Well, whoever installed this power cable did a technically safe, but, you know, safe-ish, very typical rush job. They fused the neutral and only the hot is switched and they left in the death cap. And that safety ground is just going to this bit, bit of bare wire that's for the bias and it's just tack soldered. So the amp's unlikely to electrocute you immediately, but it's a crappy job. You know, I, if the owner keeps this amp, if the buyer keeps this amp, I would be glad to fix that for him because that's unacceptable in an otherwise nice amp like this. You can see down here, there's a Sprague atom in the bias. The rest of the bias circuit is stock, untouched. You can see here the uh, different colored wires than you'd expect to find in a 1965 output transformer. Uh, the output tube sockets have new screen good resistors. These look to be a two or three watt uh, metal oxide's not a bad choice. Very common to change these out. You've seen me do it a thousand times if you watch this channel. So that's not a criticism. I'm just documenting it for the owner. And here, documenting for the owner, the 45th week of 1965 is the date stamp. That's late enough in the year. This thing might have actually shipped from the factory in 66. If you want to call it a 65, if you want to call it a 66, both are possibly arguably correct. Someone has replaced the twisted wire that was stock, the blue and the yellow, from the normal channel and the non-reverb vibrato channel here, and just gone here with this shielded wire. 
It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't really offer any improvement either to shield those. Uh, the, the twisting usually takes care of everything. It's kind of ugly. And this particular wire that they use, it's gotten really sticky over, over time. Looks and feels like it might just be George L. Cable. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's a pointless change to make. Uh, you can see a new input cap has been added here with some ugly solder joints in this area. That's not a deal breaker. I could clean that up. And all the replaced cathode bias uh, caps here um, were pretty, pretty much a rush job with ugly solder joints, but they're not tacked in place. I've seen much worse. Down here on the normal channel, all four caps have been replaced. So we got some... Uh, this one's at least a 715P. I'm not sure about these two. Let's see. So we got 6PS, a 715P. So two 715Ps and a 6PS, and this cap's been changed out for a fairly generic little cheapo ceramic. Again, I've seen much worse. It's a shame the original blue molded Ajax are, are gone. Won't affect the sound of the amp, really. Uh, though, in general, uh, the polyesters, like this uh, one right here, sound better than the polypropylene. That's the uh, 6PS and the 418 and a few others that are harder to get these days. The buyer says that the tremolo ticks, that could be lead dress here on the tremolo tube. It could also just need the classic capacitor here, a 10 nanofarad across the roach. That solves that issue in a lot of fenders. It could also be that this tremolo, it could also be that the lead going to this tremolo switch, the, the foot switch is running across the cathodes and the plate of these other tube stages. So let me play, let me get it fired up and let's listen to it for tremolo tick and uh, play around with lead dress, see if we make, make that problem go away. Before I do that though, I wanna point out some things over here. First of all, this bright cap, the leads are much longer than I've seen typically. It's very uh, kinked and that solder joint's been touched at some point in the past. These two resistors here have been changed, which is not a problem in and of itself, but I see a resistor there that has never been soldered. So let's take that out, demonstrate that, and I'll solder it it makes a big difference. All right, let's pull these jacks out. Fish the tooth washers out of our way. And here's what I saw. This resistor lead was twisted around here, but no one's ever soldered it. So that ground is very unreliable. Let me solder that. Even if I don't get paid for this, even if it goes back to up to Chicago land and someone else buys this, this is just a nice thing I can do while I have it open to demonstrate the issue. I have no incentive to invent problems in this amp. I have no animus towards any party involved. I hope that, uh, you know, some suitable accommodation can be made between the buyer and the seller as to the discrepancy on that transformer. I need to get some flux off of this one to do that one a little bit better. Uh, you know, maybe a partial refund because the transformer would be in order, I don't know, or anything else that I, I find in this video. Or anything else I find it, or anything else I find in this video that the owner did not know about, potentially the store didn't know about, that affect the usability. But one bad solder joint like that, one missed solder joint should not ruin someone's view of an amplifier in this case when there was service done in the past. Now, I have seen some very expensive boutique amps on the market where such oversights are fairly common, and that's not a good look. And I think people really need to get better at this stuff before they start selling stuff to the public, especially commercially. But uh, in this case, it's just a matter of someone forgot when they were changing things out. And I can fix it. And this is a crappy old tooth washer. Let me put a good one in place. It's not an original washer. It's just a crappy one someone had laying around. I'll put in a good one here. Put these back in. I did check. They are Switchcraft jacks. Uh, this is hard to do with the camera here. Let me move it out of my way. And yes, I'm editing out bits as I go so I can move the camera out of my way. If I was going to mess with this amp, if I was going to create a, a fake problem to benefit my friend, I would 
certainly come up with something more elaborate than a uh, one missed ground on a normal channel input jack. I could set something on fire, et cetera, et cetera, put everything back together and thank you meter, then pretend to discover it. That's not my game. That's not my friend's game. And I don't, I don't think the store in question, which has a very good reputation, is going to be playing that kind of game themselves. I think everyone's going to want to have a good resolution to this. I get this bend here a little bit farther from the chassis. Oh, I guess I should have mentioned why I was soldering there at those jacks down there. Whenever I remove the jacks from fender and put them back, uh, they're soldered together at that one point and that solder joint often gets stressed. So by reflooring the solder there after retightening, sometimes it, it prevents problems from happening down the road. All right, let's power this on. Got my cab connected, got a guitar ready to go. It came with a fairly generic Chinese 5AR4 and two Softec uh, 5881 WXTs, you know, the Softec 6L6s. I've not checked what's in the preamp tube slots yet. Let's take out a standby. Okay. Not a bad noise floor. Let's check the vibrato. What, what was that? All right, with the, is it there with the volume off? Yeah, it's in the background. That's not ticking, that's an oscillation. And I can change it by moving the grid of V3. V3 in this amp is equivalent to V5 in the reverb tremolo, the reverb mo equipped models. Let's see, it's a Groove Tubes labeled ECC83. Let's put a different tube in there and see if the prompt goes away before we do anything crazy. A lot of the time, when you have oscillation like that in a circuit like this, it's a tube that's got an issue. You hear that, that little oscillation that started and left? Though it might have just gone really high in frequency. Uh, oscillation's gone. I think that, uh, that sound, which may not have played back on YouTube with its compression for audio, it was the sound of something that was oscillating and then it went away. Uh, and it went higher and higher in pitch until it disappeared. Let me just plug a guitar in and see what it sounds like. Usually if there's a high frequency oscillation still remaining, it's audible as unpleasant, weird things happening in the amp. But I suspect that it actually went away. Let's plug in a Telecaster, just do a quick test. Hum is the single coil. Let me check my mic pre real quick. I think we're good. Now let's try the vibrato channel. Tremolo. There's nothing wrong with the sound of this amp. It sounds really good. 
that oscillation is long gone. I, I can just tell this thing's a good app. Um, from the buyer's perspective, it's a good app that does not have the original output transformer. It was described as, but the uh, output transformer that, that's in there might be a better transformer. It's just a matter of originality versus functionality. And as far as originality goes, you know, it's got this kind of strange change here. It's, you know, like this shielded cable here, let me point this out to you. This shielded cable here isn't actually shielded because that ground broke loose because it was the wrong wire soldered in the wrong way. And touching it to the ground there, it's not gonna make any difference in this part of the circuit. Anyway, and you know, we've got the orange drop special down there. Shine your ever loving light on me. So it's a good amp. It's not in uh, pristine condition, but it's in very good shape. I'll let the owner and the seller or the buyer and the seller fuss over what the price should be versus the price that was paid. Uh, personally, I hope that the owner just gets a partial refund from the store and that everyone walks away from it understanding what's going on. Because I think the, the owner, uh, the, the buyer could, if he turns into the long-term owner, could have a fantastic amp on his hands here. Definitely needs to have the a, a longer power cable correctly installed. Might need to have some cleaning done on the board. I heard some staticky sounds. Those might be some old tubes, might be DC on the board. I'd like to clean all this nonsense up and put it back to how it would have been in 65, 66. But overall, this is far from a harsh critique of this amplifier as purchased. Anyway, I gotta go start supper. It's Friday night. Hope you all enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.